Hello, everyone, and welcome to MSK Case 90. This is a case status post sports injury, and we have T1 and T2 fat sat axial images through the proximal thigh, and there's a glaring abnormality that I hope everyone recognizes. So the high yield question is, what's the most likely diagnosis here? And this is a T1 axial image here. Is this a ganglion cyst, a hematoma, a muscle infarct, or a solid neoplasm? What's the most likely diagnosis? So if we take a look here, notice that it's T1 heterogeneously bright, right? It's not quite dark. There's some bright signal in here, sort of a laminar collection within the adductor muscle. And it's also heterogeneously bright on T2. And we've lost the architecture of the muscle, right? And there's a little bit of edematous change in the surrounding muscle, maybe subcutaneous edema as well, right? It has mass effect on the muscle. It's sort of, you know, a space occupying lesion, right? The best answer here would of course be a hematoma. This is a simply hematoma, especially after a sports-related injury. This is not a ganglion cyst because we'd expect the T1 signal to be dark if it was a ganglion cyst. Even if it was a complicated ganglion cyst, we wouldn't expect that much edema in the soft tissues. A muscle infarct would preserve the internal architecture of the muscle, and that's certainly not preserved here. There'd be a lot more edema in the muscle as well if it was a muscle infarct. And a solid neoplasm is a possibility uh, because tumors can bleed. But, you know, I didn't show you any contrast images. And if there was certainly internal enhancement in the lesion, then we would think more about a solid neoplasm. But especially given the history of a sports injury, the best answer here would be a hematoma. An intramuscular hematoma is usually due to trauma or patients on like Coumadin, uh, Lovenox, anticoagulation, you can develop hematomas. Remember, tumors can also have blood within them. So always keep that in your differential, but really a hematoma is a localized collection of blood that's not in a blood vessel essentially, right? So if it's in the muscle, we call that an intramuscular hematoma. The appearance on the MRI can really vary, but usually there's some element of increased signal on T1 and T2 because of the blood within the lesion, right? You also wanna look for surrounding edema in the soft tissues. There was edema even in the muscle in this case, and even in the subcutaneous tissues as well. And that often points to the fact that there is a hematoma, especially after some sort of trauma. Again, I think hematomas can have some peripheral enhancement, especially if it's subacute or chronic, but usually there's no solid internal enhancement. When you start to see solid internal enhancement, you wanna start thinking about a hemorrhagic tumor. Okay, very important. Now, the MRI findings are usually based on the stage of blood, right? There's four different stages. You can have a hyperacute bleed, an acute bleed, a subacute bleed, or a chronic bleed. Hyperacute is usually within the first several hours, up to 12 hours, 18 hours. The blood product is usually oxyhemoglobin, and that's usually iso-intense on T1 and usually bright on T2. An acute bleed, usually in the first day or two, that has deoxyhemoglobin. That's usually either iso-intense to muscle or hypo-intense or darker than muscle, and usually stays darker than muscle on T2. A subacute hemorrhage, usually in a week, two, three weeks, that has methemoglobin, and that's going to be bright on both T1 and T2. And a chronic hemorrhage, which usually has hemosiderin, is usually going to be dark. So that's going to be hypo-intense on T1 and hypo-intense on T2. So the appearance of a hematoma can certainly vary based on the timing, right? And the blood product that's there. But this table, I think, is very helpful in assessing, uh, you know, the degree of hemorrhage and, you know, what the timing is. And of course, the clinical history is so important. You know, the fact that this patient had a sports-related injury kind of points us towards a hematoma, specifically an intramuscular hematoma. Hope this was helpful. Thank you so much again for all your support and attention. Tune in next week for another high yield MSK unknown case.